somebody gives you a complicated matrix like say this one um, it can be quite difficult to determine salient features of how that matrix acts on vectors just by looking at the array of numbers for example this matrix is actually just a 90 degree rotation um, around the axis 1 1 minus 1 which you wouldn't have guessed just by looking at the matrix when we looked at rotations uh, back in video 12 we saw that to determine the axis of rotation you just have to solve this equation AV equals V because the axis is fixed by the rotation and what we're going to do for the rest of the course is look at a generalization of this equation um, called the eigenvector equation which tells us a huge amount of information about the matrix we're dealing with definition suppose we've got a matrix A just n by n uh, a vector V in Rn except I want to allow V to be a complex vector for reasons that will become apparent and lambda is going to be a complex number so the eigenvector equation is AV equals lambda V so this generalizes AV equals V by seeking a rescaling factor of lambda in so if this holds so if AV equals lambda V then we say V is an eigenvector of A with eigenvalue lambda. So V is the eigenvector, lambda is the eigenvalue. In everything we're going to look at, we're going to require our eigenvectors to be non-zero. Because you see, zero is always a solution of this equation here for any lambda, right? If v equals zero, then uh, it's, it's going to solve this equation. So we, we want to discount v equals zero most of the time. To save uh, writing lots, I will often appreciate uh, uh, abbreviate eigenvector to evec and eigenvalue to eval so if you see me writing that that's what I mean this name eigenvector and eigenvalue this this prefix the prefix eigen comes from German it comes from the German word for self so this is a vector that gets sent back to itself by a up to some scaling factor lambda and you can stick this prefix in front of many, many different things. Um, so you can stick it in front of vector, you can stick it in front of value. You can also stick it in front of things like uh, line. So an eigen line would be a line of eigenvectors, or an eigen direction that tells you the direction in which an eigenvector points, or an eigen space. That's going to be a space consisting of eigenvectors for some particular eigenvalue. Or more exotically, you can talk about eigenfunctions. Oops. Let's write that again. Or eigenstates. So, eigenstates is something from quantum mechanics. Uh, it talks about states of your system, which are somehow eigenstates. Um, eigenfunctions, let me just give you an example. Here's an equation that you're familiar with. d by dx of e to the lambda x is lambda e to the lambda x. And looking at this formally, this is very similar to the equation a v equals lambda v, where a has been replaced by this differential operator d by dx. v is this guy, e to the lambda x, and lambda is, is still lambda. So what this is saying is that e to the lambda x is an eigenfunction for differentiation with eigenvalue lambda. 
it's hard to overemphasize the importance of eigenvectors and eigenvalues in mathematics and in its applications. So we're going to see some fun applications in this course, but you're going to come across more and more interesting applications as time goes on. They're one of the most important notions in maths and in science. So for example, in quantum mechanics, the eigenvalues and eigenvectors play an absolutely central role. So for example, Schrodinger's equation uh, is really just the statement that if you have a quantum system, the possible values the energy can take on are the eigenvalues of some operator called the Hamiltonian. And this allows you to predict things like the emission absorption spectrum of a hydrogen atom with great precision. That was one of the early indications that quantum mechanics was onto the right idea. So we're going to content ourselves with just some applications in pure mathematics, um, but this is really a central idea. So how should we think of this equation? It's a strange equation, AV equals lambda V. We should think of it as a family of equations for V. So move down a bit, AV equals lambda V is a family of equations, one for each lambda. Right, so you fix an eigenvalue and you look for eigenvectors associated to that eigenvalue. There's no guarantee you're going to find any other than zero. But when you do find some, that is telling you something about your matrix. So the lambdas uh, for which a, v, equals lambda v has a solution v not equal to zero are called the eigenvalues of a. And not every number occurs as an eigenvalue of a. So it's a problem. How do you figure out which lambdas are eigenvalues of A? How do you figure out for which lambdas does this equation have a solution that's non-zero? So that's going to be what we talk about in the next video. For the rest of this video I want to answer the simpler question, which is if somebody gives you an eigenvalue of A, how do you figure out what the eigenvectors are? So let's do an example. If somebody gives you a equals 2 minus 1, 1, 0, and tells you that lambda equals 1 is an eigenvalue of a, then you should be able to find a non-trivial solution to the equation av equals lambda v. We'll see next video why lambda equals 1 is an eigenvalue, as in how I knew that to begin with. But let's just check. So AV is 2 minus 1, 1, 0 times V. I'm going to call V the components of V, X and Y. So this is 2 minus 1, 0, uh, 1, 0, X, Y. That's uh, 2X minus Y and X. And this is supposed to be equal to lambda V that is 1 times v, just x, y. So the first components have to be equal. That says 2x minus y equals x. And the second components have to be equal. That means x equals y. But this second equation implies the first, because if x equals y, then 2x minus x equals x. So this is equivalent to just saying x equals y. So the solutions of this equation, or well, the eigenvectors, let me just say eigenvectors, for this eigenvalue are all the vectors of the form x, x, in other words, with the x and y components the same.
So looking at this, what did we actually do? All we did was solve a system of simultaneous equations, right? For fixed lambda, this equation a v equals lambda v is just a, a system of simultaneous equations, simultaneous linear equations for the components of v. In fact, to write it in the kind of matrix form we were looking at uh, previously, we shouldn't be thinking of this lambda v as a constant term, right, because it's got a v in it. So we should really take that onto the left hand side. So it's equivalent to uh, a minus lambda times the identity v equals zero. Okay, so if you were trying to solve this as a system of simultaneous equations, this is the, the matrix, this is the vector, and the constants are all zero. So I told you in this example that lambda equals one is an eigenvalue of a. What happens if I picked something that wasn't an eigenvalue of a? What would happen? Well, let's say lambda equals two. Let's check that lambda equals two is not an eigenvalue of a. Well, two minus one, one, zero, x, y equals now two times x, y. This is the equation we want to be able to solve this and show that any solution is just zero. Well, let's see if that's true. If I multiply out, I get two x minus y and x equals two x two y. So the first equation, two x minus y equals two x, that's telling us y equals zero, minus y equals zero. And the second is telling us x equals two y and that equals zero by virtue of the first equation. So x equals y equals zero. So if you try and find an eigenvector x, y for the eigenvalue two, you get just zero, zero. Okay, so that means two is not an eigenvalue. A. Right, the eigenvalues are the ones for which we have non-zero eigenvectors. Currently we're just getting lambdas and there are obviously infinitely many lambdas we could be getting. So we need a better way of figuring out what the eigenvalues of a matrix are and that's what we'll do in the next video.